Okay, for this video, I want to show you how to solve a triangle using law of cosines to start with. And we use law of cosines when we either know side and angle in between and another side, or if we know side, side, side. So in this situation, what we have here is we are given all three sides of a triangle. And when you are given this, the best practice is to solve for the largest angle first. Remember that the smallest angle is always opposite of the smallest side. The largest angle is always opposite the largest side. So because of the fact that B equals 15 is the largest side, angle B is going to be our largest angle and that's the one we're going to solve for. So there's two formulas that can be used for law of cosines. One is if you are finding the side measure, and it doesn't matter which of the sides you're finding. The most important thing is that the side and the angle opposite have to be on the opposite sides of the equation. So I can either use this equation, b squared equals the other sides, the other two, the sum of the other two sides squared, minus two times the product of the other two sides, times cosine of the angle measure. And I would use this one if I were trying to find side B. Since I'm trying to find angle B, a lot of times they'll already have it solved for you where you can say that cosine of B is equal to B squared minus A squared minus C squared all over negative 2ac. And basically where this came from was we just moved the a squared and the c squared to the other side. And then we divided by the part in front of the cosine b. So that's all I did here to get this. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the information that we have to find angle b. And because we're finding an angle measure, we're really going to find the inverse cosine of this value here. So b squared is 15 squared minus a squared, which is 10 squared, minus c squared, which is 7 squared, all over negative 2 times 10 times 7. Okay, the one thing about this is it's best to do it this way because of the fact that you're not rounding within the problem at all. And if you round within the problem, it is possible that you will get the wrong solution. So it's best not to round until the very end. So if you can get good at entering things into your calculator like this, that's the best method, or just keep hitting answer, that's the other option. So let me grab my calculator to show you how to plug this in. So we're gonna do inverse cosine, Make sure that you open a new set of parentheses for the top part of the fractions. So I want to put the 15 squared minus 10 squared minus 7 squared all in parentheses because otherwise when I plug that into my calculator, it will not group it first and it would do the division first and then it would only divide the 7 squared. So make sure that anytime you have a numerator or a denominator that you put it in parentheses in your calculator. And then again, we want to put the denominator in parentheses, so negative 2 times 10 times 7. And then we would close the parentheses for the first one and hit enter, and we get 122.88 degrees. And I did forget to mention, make sure that you check that your mode is in degrees and not radians. So if you got something different here, it's probably because you didn't change it to degree mode. So you always wanna be in degree modes when working with law of cosines. All right, so we found that B is approximately 122.88 degrees. So we have our first angle measure. Okay, so what we are missing still are the other two angles, A and C. So we found that this one is 122.88, and just round to whatever place it tells you to in your problem. It changes from situation to situation, so just round to whatever you are told to round to. All right, so you could use law of cosines again to find the next angles, or you can just use law of sines, which is a lot easier to plug into your calculator. So I'm gonna use law of sines. Because I ended up with an obtuse angle, we know that we can only have one obtuse angle in a triangle. And we already found the largest angle measure, so we can't have any measures that are going to be larger than this one. But if this happened to be an acute angle, you do want to be careful. Um, so the best rule of thumb or best practice is just to use law of science to find the smallest 
um, measurement first. And if you just always do that, then you'll never run into a bad situation. In this case, like I said, there's only one triangle that can be formed because this is obtuse, but if this were acute, it's best to use um, the smallest of the two other angles just to be on the safe side. And that's if you're given side angle side to start with is when it's really the most problematic. <clears throat> All right, so to find sine of C, I'm gonna find my angle measure C. I'm gonna put it over the opposite side of seven and then I'm going to use angle B because I know this one, so I would do sine of the angle that I just found, 122.88, over the opposite side of 15, and then I just need to plug this into my calculator. So I end up with C equals 7 times sine of 122.88 divided by 15, and because I'm finding an angle measure, I'm just going to go directly to the inverse sine of this value. Okay, so let's grab the calculator again, plug this in. So we would do second sine, and then we would plug in our information. So we have 7 times the sine of 122.88, and we could have put the answer here if you wanted to be more precise. Um, make sure you close your parentheses behind the 122.88. And then we would put in the divided by 15. I've got to make sure I'm looking at the right place on my paper. So all I did was put this in exactly how it is, 7 times sine 122.8 over 15, and we did the inverse sine because we're finding the angle measure. So we end up with our smallest angle is 23.07 degrees. All right. And then our last angle to find it, remember that all of the angles of a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. So to find our last angle, angle A, we would just do 180 minus the sum of 23.07 and 122.88. So if I plug this into my calculator, we end up with 34.05 degrees. So in case you needed me to show you that, we would just do 180 minus the sum of 23.07 and 122.88. And that's where the 34.05 came from. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.